did you have any of these actors in mind when you read the script? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I never, it's never my first thing to think of actors when I read a script. I'm always like story, tone, do I get a sniff of something that I like? I'm usually very clear cut when I read scripts and I read tons. You know, does it feel like something that connects to me or does it not? Um, it's always my second round of, of, of um, reading and if I'm going in for a meeting about a movie or to pitch my version of a movie, then you have to have cast in mind because it gives people an indication um, of how you see the movie. Um, when I read the scripts of this, I thought, oh, this, the, the casting is going to be delicate. That was my first thought because the movie mm. has that combination of, <clears throat> you know, both sort of broad laughter in it and, you know, broad comic mm. moments, but also a kind of uh, emotional sincerity. So I thought, okay, you know, if I had to describe generally, I would say, you know, it was like, I need people who can act. Not, you know, it's not, it's not a Jim Carrey project. It's not, not a broad comedy in that let's be as funny as possible. It needed actors, but it also needed actors that could be funny. And that was the range that I was thinking of. And then I mostly thought about the David character because I thought that was the most essential to get right. I thought if you blew, the, if, if you had the wrong feeling about that character, a middle-aged man starting a relationship with a much younger woman, mm. let alone the fact he's a friend of the best friend's family, mm. uh, you would come unstuck. And that's what led me to Hugh Laurie because I, I thought that he had the decency to carry that character in the, the way the story requires. It's, it can't be, he can't be seen as predatory, he can't be seen as like sexually motivated because Leighton Meester is so hot and you know <laughs> the story comes unstitched <laughs> if you did that because ultimately it's he's got to be have a conscience in the movie as well it's not you know he's not a dark force of creating this chaos he uh, he's just struggling with the the truth of what's happened as much as all the other characters thereafter actually I was able to roll out more or less my favorites for all the all the parts. I, I wanted Oliver Platt more than I wanted anyone else in that role, and I wanted Alison Janney. And I was like, if we can get Alison Janney, it stops there. And we got her. And and I had one phone call with Oliver Platt because we were on different coasts, and he's just hilarious. You know, he's just a very funny, very erudite mm. man. And we've so I put down the phone. And I said, yes, I'd love Oliver if he'll agree to it. And it it was a good, it was a happy experience rolling out the cast on this one. Um, do you feel that by being British you've given this film more of an international appeal, so as opposed to if it was being directed by an American director? Do you know, it's a good question. I re if this film had been made by an American, I, you know, would it have been different? I honestly don't know. Everybody's different anyway, you know, mm. the, the tone of a piece. You know, I, it's interesting for me in, in Hollywood, because I read scripts sometimes that you subsequently see made, and you're always like, wow, that wasn't exactly the tone I would have done for it. And I think everybody, bring, you bring your own sensibility now, I think, you know, I've never had a barrier to doing any story set wherever, and I never think this is an American story. Well, I, actually, I read a script about the the, the, the Kennedy's death and, um, and and Jackie dealing with it. And I thought that actually is an American property that it would be mm. wrong for a Brit to take on. But the um, you know the world of suburbia that the oranges takes place in for me was like suburbia anyway. The relationships, and you know, it's best friend dads. It's two kids that grew up together because their families were best friends, not because they were, and a mother-daughter that's smothering. Those for me were like, that could be anywhere. And I tried to execute the thing like it could be anywhere. So in that regard, you know, I guess you are bringing an outside sensibility. I think as a Brit working in America, you bring a certain something at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think Brits, we tend to do reality work. We're not blessed with glamorous light. We're not into the sort of gloss and glamour in a way that Hollywood um, historically is so I think where that meeting but you know we have documentary tradition we have that you know so where British sort of sensibility of re reality and everything meets American aspirational and heightened and this that, and the other for me that's a kind of good sweet spot I think that's why you know Americans tend to embrace British filmmakers and actors and all the rest of it so um, I think yeah I, th I think I don't think of it as an American story, I just think of it as a story. Okay. Um, how did you decide to approach the uh, cinematography with the uh, DOP? Uh, great question. I mean, you're always, when you start out on the journey, you're trying to find what's the look that best suits the material. My, my, uh, my conversations with the cinematographer and, and the production designer were, I wanted it to look 
warm and rich. I didn't want it to look like some social realism. I wanted it to be slightly more comfortable than that. I wanted an audience to sort of hit the movie running and go, oh, I'm in a comfortable place. I'm not going to, you know, <clears throat> I'm not going to be in a in a gritty Ken Loach world. You know, mm. the the story, given you know the sort of edginess of the premise, you know, I think you have to allow, you have to let an audience in with a kind of sure-footedness, like this is the kind of movie you're going to be in for, folks. And and I, you know, the same reason the houses in the movie, whether the suburban houses where people live there, they're nice houses. You're in a safe world, but on the other hand, they're not too big and you're not watching a film about rich people that you know I was trying to get the sort of everyday every every man every woman quality to them um, so I, I said you know to Steve Fearberg who shot the movie let's make it as rich and as possible we shot with a red camera which was fairly new at that point and you know at that point the the, 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 the chip that they had in that camera at the time it gave a slight it was a filmic look but slightly heightened and I thought that's it's the first thing I ever did on digi digital, having only worked on film. It was a, a positive decision for me because I thought it looks slightly hyper reality, hyper real, and mm -hmm. and this world is a it's a little bit fairy taleish. The way you know it's a feel good movie, the way that things fall out. But it's, I didn't want you know it didn't want to be like a American uh, big studio movie. I didn't want it too unreal, too glossy. But I did want it safe and comfortable. And that's you know we talked about a color scheme and a and a look according to that. Okay. Uh, family betrayal and scandals have often been covered in films before, but um, what is it about the oranges that uh, you, that you consciously did differently? Um, I didn't go in thinking I consciously had to make this a a film that you know we've all seen films in suburbia. That's a very common milieu and mm. sex betrayal scandal. You know they're all. They're all, you know they're great words to have on the, on your poster. You know they're they're seductive to us, and many movies deal with them in in a great way. I, I don't think you can ever, you know, prescribe something for the movie. You just try and tell the story that you you have to know what's good about your story and what the strengths of the story are. Like for me, when I went out to make this, I'm like, okay, it's got all this emotional stuff, this and the other. It's got to be funny. It's got to if it's not if it's not if it's not good comedy, I don't think the the thing will sustain itself. It's not. You know, it's not the kids are all right, which is very nuanced in character yeah. development. It's a little more schematic than that. So, um, you know, I just went out trying to, you know, make sure it felt both funny and real. Um, and the rest, you, 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 you know, it's going to trust to itself. I thought the script had some original elements, and that's, you know, that's what you're hoping that will, you know, come across in the end. And um, finally, um, what what was the reaction like at the uh, Toronto Film Festival? Uh, Toronto was extraordinary. I had been, you know, been like a year and a half in post. I was in a dark room a lot of the time with just one editor. The movie had never been tested with a outside sort of friends and little friends and family screenings at the producer's house and a small theatre in Hollywood. And once we'd heard we got into Toronto, it was an enormous scramble to get the thing finished. We had a delivery deadline for the first time. Uh, so I'd been, uh, you know, living around the clock for several weeks to get it actually done. I finished it on a Thursday morning before the Saturday premiere. We had a great slot in Toronto the first Saturday at 8 o'clock in the night. And I literally got, you know, we delivered the film as late as it could possibly be. And I got turned up in Toronto. And the next thing, it was like 950 people in, in the cinema and it packed to the rafters. Mm -hmm. and. It's a warm festival anyway, Toronto, um, and a, a nice audience festival. And I sat down there next to my wife, nervous as hell, this, that and the other, and people laughed the entire movie, and I was like, frankly, I was shocked. It had been a, quite a tricky journey. The movie's, I hope you don't see it, but it was a delicate one to manage in the, mm. in the, in the post-production and how it was cut and what your feelings about this relationship were, blah, blah, blah. And it was amazing, you know, people, and I told my wife, I said, wow, it's so simple. It's just a bit of human laughter, you know, and I was, it was a little. It was a little surreal moment, frankly. I mean, it was fantastic because it had a great, you know, and I had, you know, friends and agents there and things like that. People said you'll never have a better screening than that in your entire life, you know. And they, they're all people that are very long in the tooth. It was, it was, a, it was a great experience, but, you know, slightly surreal one for me because I, just been all about the angst, and then suddenly that there was some, some pleasure. Excellent, um, Julian. Thank you very much. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you.